Equations are wonderful. Equations are at the heart of physics. They're how we analyze the world and solve problems. By the end of this video, you'll be able to write equations like this one. Equations for any situation where the forces are balanced. Welcome to Flip Physics. Today we're going to talk about balanced forces equations and related to that vectors and how to resolve them into two components. If you're dealing with a situation in physics and they tell you that the forces on an object are balanced or they tell you that the object is moving at a constant speed or that the object isn't accelerating, those are all signals that you can write balanced forces equations. So here's an ultra simple situation to start. Let's say you're having a tug of war. On one side is team A, on the other side is team B. During that tug of war, there's a moment when nobody's winning. The rope has a constant velocity of zero. It's not moving and it's not speeding up or slowing down. In that situation, the forces must be balanced. Otherwise, it would start speeding up in one direction or the other. Since the forces are balanced, the forces to the right are equal to the forces to the left. So we could write an equation for that. The force of team A equals the force of team B. FA equals FB. Here's another situation. Let's say you have a battery-powered car moving at a constant velocity across a table. Here in this situation, you have four forces acting. You have the force of gravity acting down, you have the normal force acting up, you have the driving force of the electric motor in the little toy car, and you have friction pulling it back. Notice that because this car is moving at a constant velocity, the driving force and the friction force must be equal to each other. They must balance each other out. If the forces were unbalanced, it would be speeding up or slowing down. If the driving force were bigger than friction, the car would speed up. So we can write two equations for this motion. Just like in 2D motion, the x and y directions do not affect each other. So we write one equation in the x direction and one equation in the y direction. In the x direction, we can say that forces to the left equal forces to the right. So the driving force, FD, is equal to the frictional force, FF. In the y direction, we can say that upward forces equal the downward forces. So the normal force, FN, is equal to the force of gravity, FG. Lastly, we can make this equation a little bit more detailed by replacing Fg with Mg. As we discovered in a previous video, the force of gravity is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 on Earth. If this comes as a surprise to you, I suggest you take another look at the mass versus weight video. So these are our balanced forces equations for this situation. And if we were given some of these numbers, then we could solve them to find other numbers. The last step you need to know about for writing these balanced forces equations is how to deal with angles. Let's say you're pulling a cart along and you're pulling it at an angle, like pulling it with a string or a handle. And let's say you're pulling it at a constant speed, meaning the forces are balanced. This is what the forces would look like in that situation. Notice that your pulling force is both up and to the right. Since the x and y direction are looked at separately in physics, we have to split this force into its x and y components, its vertical and horizontal components. This is just like we did in 2D motion. So we do that by drawing a vector triangle. The x side of the triangle, the x component of the force, that means the amount of force in our angled pulling that acts in the x direction. That's going to be calculated from Sokotoa using cosine because we have the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse. Rearrange to make the x component the subject and we can get our value for the x component of this angled force. The y side of this triangle that's the y component of the force, the amount of this force that acts up. That's going to be calculated using sine because we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. Just like in 2D motion, one component will always be sine and one component will always be cosine. So now that we split that force into its x and y components, we can use those components in our equations. In the x direction, we have the x component of the pulling force pulling to the right and we have the force of friction pulling to the left. Since the forces are balanced, these have to be equal to each other, so we'll write FF, force of friction, is equal to FP cosine theta, or theta, depending on whether you were brought up in the USA or England like me. In the y direction, we have the y component of the pulling force acting up, and we have the normal force acting up, and then we have the force of gravity acting down. Both of the two forces acting up must together balance the force of gravity acting down. So we can write that Fg, the force of gravity, is equal to Fn, the normal force, plus Fp sine of the angle. That's the upward component of your pulling force. 
the two upward forces are equal to the one downward force. And lastly, we can replace Fg with Mg, just like we did last time. And again, if we were given some numbers, we could plug those numbers in and solve the equation to find some missing value in a question. And that's it. That's how to write balanced forces equations. And the reason all this works is because of Newton's first law, that an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at a constant speed, unless the forces become unbalanced. From suspension bridges to cars with cruise control to any object that's either not moving or moving at a constant speed, we can use these equations to analyze all kinds of real world problems. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. Please comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. If you like this video, press the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time. So this time I'm going to sidestep the cryptic references. My t-shirt is the Harry Potter Alliance. And that is a charity that uses the theme of storytelling and particularly Harry Potter to um, send positive messages and, in and encourage people to take action. It's an activist organization slash charity. If you want to know more about their work, go to their website. That's harrypotteralliance.org. The weapon we have is love.